Hello and welcome back to the channel of Major 92, the Shaman of Gaming, and welcome back to Hex and Dex. After a little bit of a layoff, just been uh, playing some other games, uh, getting ready for a few games, and now I'm ready to jump right back into this. Uh, the first thing I want to touch on is the fact that, um, <coughs> excuse me, at the end of the last video, I kept saying that the next area I was going to go and do was Huntsman's Cops, and that's actually not even what I meant. <laughs> I actually uh, meant No Man's Wharf. Uh, but, coming to think of it, I could actually probably do with just popping into um, Huntsman's Cops and seeing if I can actually speak with Falcon uh, to this point and uh, with the stats that I'm at, because I've never, I've never actually been able to speak to him before. Uh, I actually popped the soul of the last giant because I did look and it's only the giant stone axe that you need so I'm never going to be able to use that with this character. Um, so I decided to use that because I think you need, I think it's 2000 souls that you need for um, to get uh, Lysia to move the, uh, to turn the rotunda for you. I'm pretty sure it is. So I'm going to just go in there, see if I can speak to Falcon. Uh, if I can, then I might pop another one of the boss souls, um, because I probably won't have enough souls to buy any of the hexes, because I will have used most of it to actually turn the rotunda. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what we're left with. I think it's 2,000 souls, it might be 3, it's, t it's either 2 or 3, but we'll, uh, we'll find out that very, very shortly, right now. Oh, hello there. <clears throat> An honor to see you. Is it really? <laughs> this room is not as it seems. There are two, not one pathways leading out. <clears throat> to be honest, I think that's pretty fucking obvious due to the fact there's a huge window there. Reveals the other path. <laughs> and this, you lovely thing, only runs on miracles. Bullshit. Shall I provide you with one? Two thousand. <clears throat> I mean, I could kill her, but it's actually when you fight her, it's actually quite a difficult fight. Um, she's got a hell of a lot of health, and she uses a lot of miracles. And I actually might want to use miracles and buy some shit off her. I think I still don't think I've actually bought the uh, the ring of whatever it's called. I keep forgetting a uh, ring of prayer. Yeah, I've not, still not bought that off her. So I want to keep her alive because I do want to be able to buy that at some point. So, right, let's go into the beginning of Huntsman's Cops, see if we can speak to Falcon. <clears throat> if we can, then we'll try and see if we can buy our first hexes. Um, <clears throat> and then if not, we'll just pop back and uh, start going through No Man's Wharf. Uh, like I actually meant to say that we were doing. And then probably the first hex, if I can't speak to him, probably the first hexes I can come across are ones that strayed cells. Uh, but I'll still have to probably beat the, la the uh, lost sinner before I, before I can open him up. The dark stairs. I see them. Ah, so I can. <coughs> My name is Falcon. A sip of this coat whilst I'm waiting. <clears throat> right, okay, let's see what, uh, heart strike staff, heart strike chime, they're actually pretty good. Ring of life protection, sells dark pine resin, here we go, hexes, <clears throat> dark orb, he actually sells dark weapon but you need 16 intelligence to use it, let's buy that. Resonant soul, let's buy that, let's buy dark orb, what else does he so great resonant soul. I think these are kind of like soul arrows. Hex that distorts the power of life emits a large mass of dark at the cost of souls can be used even without souls, but at greatly reduced strength. Okay, I see. Resonant flesh. Hex developed independently by outcast falcon transforms a certain number of souls into HP over a period of time. Uh, hex developed independently by falcon transforms a certain number of souls into attack power over a period of time. Something gained, something lost. I see. Right, so at least I can actually buy, I could actually buy some hexes. Uh, now, I think I've got one slot. So let's see if I can put something in that slot. 
Um, I still haven't got the intelligence to use that yet. So let's use. Let's just put Dark Orb in it for now, and then once we're cleared No Man's Wharf, we should have the souls to uh, try and get some more achievement slots and get some more intelligence. Let's actually check what my intelligence is now. Well, it's 15, so I could I could level it up whenever I want, but for the time being, let's just make our way through uh, No Man's Wharf. At least we know now that we are actually starting to put an actual hex build together. And true sort of uh, wizard or sorcerer or caster, whatever you want to call it, in true sorcerer style, I will probably eventually start using stuff that's got no poise, just so I look more like a sorcerer. <laughs> probably have long cloaks and hats and hoods and shit. Start using some of that. <clears throat> so we get a monastery charm right there. In fact, have I actually... Uh, what does it say that you use this with staff? Okay, so you can only use a staff for that. Um, sorcerer staff. Make sure I can still roll. I can't. So let's change one of these things. How much does that weigh? Seven. And that weighs 5.2. Might still be able to roll with that. There we go. Sorted. <clears throat> now let's move. Move on. Play on, play on. Hate that sound delay. It does that quite a lot. One of the places that I notice that it does it near enough every time is an area that you see quite a lot usually because it's where the that chest with five human effigies uh, spawns at the beginning of uh, the Forest of Fallen Giants. If you jump from that sort of island onto uh, the little waterfall bit, it always delays the sound. I'm really not sure why. Get some more pickups right there. <coughs> One of the things that I am quite concerned with though is the fact that I've only got one upgraded weapon. And it's one that can actually break fairly quickly. And I'm not even sure whether I've got any repair powder. In fact, let's check that now. I actually haven't, so <clears throat> I'm probably going to have to be a little bit cautious and careful with the way I do things. The old knights are really easy to predict. And don't worry, the uh, the face beating with the spatula will still be going on if I die. I've got all that sorted. Um, like I've mentioned in previous videos, the, the lighting in this room really isn't great. It's horrendous outside at the minute as well, so it's really fucking dark. But that is no, no excuse to back out of... Uh, punishing myself for playing like a retard. <clears throat> I've always thought this area for some reason, just this kind of below water area, it really reminds me of something but I'm really not sure what, whether it's in f something from another game, it might be. Do, 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 do. But um, in this area, uh, me and my brother were talking about this um, when we started playing this game. How um, obviously there's that horrendous defi uh, define, define, uh, design error with Earthen Peak that when you actually get to the top and you beat Mitha, the lift takes you up and you end up in the Iron Keep. It's a huge sort of oversight, something they've just missed. There's actually another one here. If you actually um, note down the fact that of how sort of close to the water Hade is, and then you sort of go down and then go down in a lift, and when you come out here into No Man's Wharf, you're still above sea level, which is really weird. That's another sort of error that they've 
that they've uh, that they've made, and obviously the ship takes you out to sea and out to the the Lost Bastille. That's another design error that they've sort of overlooked. Speak to Lucatil. That might be you. You haven't, you haven't changed a bit, have you? <laughs> the longer I am here, the more madness I discover. A wretched place indeed, but not without traces of its former glory. What could have caused such degradation? The impending dark. That's obviously what it is. Ah, yes. I have not thanked you for humouring me the other day. This is for you. Nice. Of course, I have no idea what it is. No, of course not. Ugh. Our land of mirror is surrounded by enemies. <coughs> I think she's actually one of my favourite NPCs. There is only one way up in mirror. Join the order and prove yourself in battle. <coughs> My family had little fortune and no name. I had to carve out a piece of the world for myself. With two things. My sword. To be honest, a lot of the surrounding lands um, in this game that are, you know, mentioned. I was raised to wield. Uh, Ferosa, Mira, and a few of the others. They all kind of, uh, apart from a few. Um, they all sound sort of like warring states, just they're just constantly in battle, and the only way to actually prove yourself, as she says, is is to prove yourself in battle and become a warrior. <coughs> and then I came here to. Have you heard of the undead? An undead gradually loses. Finally, he turns. Not only have I heard of them, but I fucking am one. One can skirt this wicked fate, only assuming, of course, that. Can only hope that they are. I'm sorry. I suppose I've grown. Okay, it's all good. I would say that I would sleep with you, but you know, just to give ourselves something to look forward to. But with that skanky right hand side of your face, I might actually have to excuse the pun, but pull out. I, the only thing I'm I'm wondering here, I've just got to be careful. This fire arrow is coming towards me. Roll. Um, yeah, one of the only things I'm wondering is that my weapon will almost certainly be broken by the time I get to the boss. Um, there's a lot of enemies in this area. Uh, I obviously don't have to fight them all, but I want to actually pick everything up, give myself, you know, the the best chance of having a bit of a soul boost. Uh, and get get myself some some other items and stuff uh, to work towards um, more hexes. But my uh, so I don't even know what that was. That was the strangest noise probably I think I've ever made. No, <laughs> but obviously my weapon is probably going to be broken by the time. But I just have to try and make sure that I don't use any of my dark orbs, and that might actually be enough to beat the flexile sentry just with those dark orbs. I d to be honest, I don't know how powerful they are. I mean, as I said, I've never really used hexes. I know Dark Orb was pretty good in Dark Souls 1, but it was just classed as a sorcery, so I, I don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, considering the Flexile Sentry is kind of like a dark being, it actually, dark damage does quite a lot to it, because you get dark pine resin. Uh, in this area, I think, I think you pick it up, or you can buy it, or whatever. And I've used that most of the times when I fought Flexile Sentry and it does some decent damage, so maybe if my weapon is broken, that's what I can fall back on. To be honest, I think probably a base weapon, uh, a base damage weapon would probably be able to deal with Flexile Sentry. It's not particularly difficult. Wow, you've travelled, you've fucking come a long way. <laughs> quite, quite a lot further than I thought that would. Yeah, there you go. There's the dark pine resin. I did think that you picked picked some up. Yeah, get away from the fucking torch, you cockhead. Actually, doing a bit more damage to that than I thought it would. Yeah, this this falchion is definitely going to be broken by the time I get to the boss.
I don't think of upgrading any more weapons. Anyway, let me have a quick, a quick look. Dagger. Oh, this falchion plus five. No, I haven't. Right, okay. Unless you pick up some repair powder in this area, which I don't think you do. As I said, I'm not quite. I'm not as clued up as um, as to where all the items and stuff are in this game as I am in Dark Souls One. Because in Dark Souls One, I think I could probably tell you at every. If you if you gave me a, an item or a weapon or a spell or whatever, and asked me to tell you where it you, where you found it, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to to do it. In this game, not so much. I'm getting a bit more of a clue about where everything is, but only a bit more of a clue. I do not want to die. I do not want to take the spatula treatment again. Heh. <laughs> Shields enough to actually make them rebound. I didn't know that. I think this is the building that there's actually nothing in. Yeah. I still always come up there for some obscure and strange reason. That dog's a little bit far from home. Ranging leggings. This dog. Die up. I always forget which which is the best way to go as well here um, first because I'm, I can't really I think if you go that way you just come up to the other side of that gate no you co yeah you come to the wrong side of that gate if you go that way but you can use the uh, Faris Lockstone which I don't actually think I've got yeah I haven't got any um, because I used the only one that I had on that room in the uh, Forest of Fallen Giants. Probably one of the good things to do here as well is to light a torch. I probably should have done that, to be honest. At least this actually does quite a decent amount of damage to these. Uh, I'm actually going to light my torch, though. I was going to say, hopefully I'm not covered in that shit that makes you... Fucking blow up. Right. <clears throat> Just to back these guys off. Oh, I do want to go into that. I do want to go into that room. But there's shitloads of these dark stalkers in that room. There's like. It starts off as being two down here, there's like two in the next room. It's losing its temper. It's so disappointing that they actually took the main point of the lighting system out of this game. In fact, you know what? I'm going to see if I've got any ranged shit that I can throw at it. Can throw at these. Got some magic damage stuff. Any fire bombs? The only thing I've got. Fuck it. Let's use these. <coughs> you can hear fucking Gavlan chugging away. Break the fucking wall. There we go. a way of <coughs> dealing some damage without ruining my weapon although I haven't got any choice now <laughs> just went balls to the wall I might end up having to fight I might end up having to fight um, flexile sentry with these dark orbs and just hoping for the best I will switch to another primary weapon of course but I think the way they work is that you can back them up into a corner. Um, you can back them away with your torch, but once you get to a corner, that's when they start actually fighting back. Right, switch from that. I don't think there's any more of those dark stalkers that you actually need to fight. Or there, there might be possibly some, but there might be two in one of the rooms. But um, I 
think there might be somewhere where I can light a torch before that. Silver Talisman. Same effect as Chameleon and Gavlan. Gavlan wheel, Gavlan deal. Gavlan wheel, Gavlan deal. Gavlan wants soul. Many, many soul. <laughs> He's a character. What? With Gavlan, you. I know, we've gone over this. Do 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 do. I never use them, so I may as well get rid of. You got the three DLC keys here as well. Is there anything else in here that I never use? I'm not going to be using these. Although I really do enjoy using them, I'm not going to be using them. Never use Lloyd's talismans either. Boost Dark Defense, I'm not going to be using them. Get rid of all of them. Rest can stay with me. In fact, I just thought, I had something in the back of my mind then that he possibly actually um, sold repair powder, but he doesn't. Maybe. Don't know what I was thinking. Probably may, may end up making some sort of magical bow as well later on, perhaps. If I can be asked. But this falchion definitely is going to be broken by the time I get to Flexile Sentry. I'll just have to hope for the best. It's not particularly difficult um, in New Game. In New Game Plus, it is a little bit more difficult, especially if you don't summon Luca Teal, because you can get overrun really quickly. The enemies that uh, come and attack you move really, really fast, and they can cause bleed. Um, hell of a lot of bleed and obviously again if you've watched any uh, Varty Vidya videos you can hit this bell from pretty much anywhere that you can see on that side with an arrow to call it in but I don't really see the point because especially in New Game, in New Game Plus maybe um, when you don't really need to pick up all the items but uh, at this point you may as well just go through and pick everything up life gems are always useful, Huckwood bones are always useful so let's Let's continue. I think this is where you come to the other side of the gate and where you can summon um, Lucatil from, if I'm not mistaken. Some three fire bombs. I can use them against Flexile Sentry as well. At this point, it's all about just. Uh, it's all about just sort of making the most of what you've got. And sort of stumbling through. You don't need to do, you know, pass bosses with flying colours or whatever. It's just as long as you get them, uh, get them gone. This is how you unlock this particular shortcut. I suppose what I could do is I could Homeward Bone and then run up to this shortcut. I could possibly do that. I don't know whether I really want to do that though, or whether it's just a waste of time. <laughs> I'm away from the chest, I don't want to ruin it. There we go, it's at risk already. I know quite a lot of people that really dislike this area. Oh, there's some repair powder. That's a, always a bonus. It still won't repair it all the way, but at least use it until the weapon actually breaks, which will probably be after I kill this particular guy. Oh, still not broken. And to be honest, there isn't actually that many more enemies to kill. So, I may as well use it now. I did think actually that it was some repair powder. I was kind of unsure, but I kind of always remembered my weapons being on the verge of breaking by the time I get to this boss, because there is a lot of there is a lot of enemies um, packed into this area, uh, and I also always forget where that breakable wall is. Is it here? No, I always forget where it is. I think it's in one of the buildings. It's that in that building over there. So let's go around here. Summon Lucatil. 
Because the, the problem I was thinking of then is that when you sort of get ambushed on the ship, I was kind of thinking, how am I going to uh, kill those enemies? I can't really run through there, because you will get caught up. When you're summoning Lucatiel, it's always a good idea to wait until she comes in, because she can get sort of lost and trail behind you. So it's, it is good to stay near her whilst you're summoning her. Where that is, I think there's some dark stalkers in this room over here. If I remember rightly, I think there might be two of them. Oh no, it's there. It's the other room. <coughs> Gotta be careful of these poison pots as well. Let Lucatiel do that. Oh, I just like get nailed by the Varangian guy. This is the wall that, that breaks, the one to my left. She's just poisoned herself. What an idiot. Hit this wall! Hit this! Not bad. God, I hate fucking crystal lizards. There we go. I'm pretty sure there's some crystal lizards in this game that I've never actually killed. Like the one outside uh, Dragon Lake Castle when you first get there it just runs off and just runs off the edge and I think the one in the doors of Faris I've never killed either I see what uh, rings I've actually got on I've got m much more useful rings than this now um, Ring of Giants for example boosts your poise and I've also got this which now I've got this, I may as well put some heavier shit on. Night leggings probably st should still be able to roll. There we go, that'll do us. Uh, have I got a spear that I can poke this with? Halberd might work. Perhaps. Work like a fucking charm. It's only throw knives and flame butterflies, but at least I've, not, I've got another... Uh, option of attack if this falchion should break before then, which I don't think it will now. I think I'm pretty safe now. Where, which building is it that's got two of those dark stalkers in it? I always forget where it is. It might be down. I know there is some down here. There's one in there. Oh shit. Teamwork. <coughs> That's fucking teamwork. Uh, this episode might actually be a little bit longer. We aren't currently on... Currently 28 minutes in. I do like to try and stick to half an hour episodes. Um, but we are close to the end of an area, so we may as well just chuck on through. It might, might go up to 35 minutes. 40. We shall see. Hi. Bye. Hi. Goodbye. Let's go and speak to Carillion. I always forget his name. Might be able to buy something that we can make use out of from him. So we will have the intelligence to speak to him at this point, at this juncture. Very well. From this day, you shall buy. I am Carillion. Carillion of the Fold. Surely you have heard the name. No, not until now. No, no, well, no, obviously I have, but I mean, Let this particular Cursed Undead will not have heard of your name. Or oh, your brilliant beard. I've already got that staff, so. I could do. I need some of that later, li later on. I need some of that later on. Um. <clears throat> I'm gonna need a lot of simpletons and a lot of skeptics spice um, to use some of the one day my teachings was the better hexes later on into our journey fuck 
missed that item. Never mind. I don't particularly think it's anything. Anything, uh. That is a must collect. Anyway, so. Let's not worry about that for now. I can pick that up off camera. Maybe if I can be bothered. Yeah, this was a little bit I was worried about with um, my weapon nearly nearly being broken. It was like, I'm definitely not going to be able to get through to this area without it breaking. Or oh, it'd probably break before I even got here. Luke Teal's just standing there, not doing anything. One of you go for her and one of you go for me. Fair fight. Nice teamwork again. Let's go and kill this last guy off. <laughs> Constantly clicking to try and lock on before you're in range. There we go. The falchion should hold up um, for this fight. Should do. No point in buff buffing my weapon because I'm not going to have it out for most of the fight. But what I am going to do is I'm going to equip a lot of ranged options as well. I'll equip some throwing knives. Throwing knives are actually pretty good in this game. Equip these fire bombs as well. And uh, let's 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 try our luck. Flexile Sentry attempt one. Hopefully there won't be another attempt because it's not a particularly difficult boss. Yeah, it doesn't do particularly. Doesn't do a lot of damage, really. Luca Teal's just fucking showing us how it's done. I'll just stand there firing dark orbs at the bastard. I mean, if I keep hitting him with shitloads of him, but I just don't want Luca Teal to die. That's the that's the one thing I really don't want to have happen. Continue my onslaught of hexy fucking bee stings. Luca Teal getting absolutely humbled by that barbed club. Which, if anybody's doing a sort of quality type build, equal uh, strength and dex, I would uh, suggest trying to use the barbed club. Right, so that's that's all my hex damage. Humbled. I should probably just run up to it and hit it in the face now, because it's about to kill Luca Teal at any second. Whoa, I just salvaged her. To be fair, I did use her pretty much as a fucking crash test dummy. Let's have Sentry Soul. -er. I don't think that particularly makes anything that I'm going to be, be able to make use of. Um, I know it makes two different weapons, I'm just unsure as to whether it makes any spells or anything like that. Paramount Flame and Fireball, and here is the navigating device to take us to Lost Brass Seal, which is really weird because we really should be below sea level at the minute. That cinematic was made a little bit better by the fact there was like a blood stain right where the camera was. Nice little touch. <clears throat> I really wish there was a way to go from here back to No Man's Wharf the way you came because it'd be so much more useful for uh, trying to pick stuff up, pick items up that you missed like I did. Right. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Just 
we're closing in on the end of the episode. And I'm going to go back down and pick up that item. I don't think it's anything particularly great, but I'm trying to be as much of a completionist as I can at the minute. So, this item here. Well, apparently not. I've actually got quite a few. Um, I have actually got quite a few soul items at the minute as well, so that's always useful. I think it's on this side, if I remember rightly. I can't really remember. Well, it must not have been. Oh, it is, because it stops at that point. <laughs> Scimitar and repair powder. Could have done with that before we just did that little section. Yeah, what I'm going to do is going to get to that, uh, to the next bonfire, walk back to Majula, and then I'll cut this episode off. At the beginning of the next episode, I'll be using some soul items, trying to level up my achievement um, and my intelligence a little bit so we can use more hexes. Dark Orb is useful but doesn't do a lot of damage. Uh, dark weapon is one of the main things that I wanted to use. I also want to eventually have the stats to use profound still because it's just ridiculous. Ridiculously useful against a lot of bosses. Uh, not not mainly, uh, not mainly, I mean mainly dark lurker. It makes it only be able to do one attack I think, and that's the sort of uh, the melee combo that it does. I don't, I can't remember whether it actually can still split into two, um, but I'm f pretty sure I heard somewhere that it can. But some of the other stuff it does is like the uh, shaded woods area, um, the the misty area with the invisible enemies. It gives them a kind of aura, so you can see them. Um, I don't think it works on Nashandra. I think I've read somewhere that it doesn't work on her, but there's plenty of enemies that cast magic. Um, Mitha, Najka, they all cast magic. So it should be really useful against them. But for now, let's use all these soul items. I said that I was going to cut the episode off before I did this, but uh, never mind. I've already gone over the limit a little bit, so I may as well just push it on a little bit more. so much better that you can use these in bulk. Great addition to the system. I'll have to do more research on these souls about their weapons. I know Dragon Rider, the Halberd, Twin Blade and the Bow, I believe. All Dragon Slayer's soul gives you the Dragon Slayer Spear. I also said in the last episode that it was that one that made three weapons obviously, which just uh, uh, that was just a mistake. Flexile Sentry, I know it makes the uh, a curved greatsword and uh, the warp sword it makes and the barbed club. So actually that might only make those three. I forgot about the warp sword. I don't know how because I've used that a lot. Um, but yeah, I think we're, we're set up Is that here? for making this build power? now, I think. So by the time we get to the point where we can uh, release Strayed, then, uh, then yeah, that's uh, that's when we're really going to see some results. So I'm going to cut this episode off right here. At the beginning of the next episode, I will be spending these souls on uh, leveling up, most probably, maybe doing some upgrading. But we shall see. Uh, hopefully, you will join me for that next episode because this one has been fucking sick. <laughs>